Uh, real quick, uh, we'll kind of start the stream here. I just want to stress one thing. The this, this stream is not um, pre-configured projects. Um, in my past tutorials, I actually designed an entire project first and then kind of outlined the steps of doing it and then redo it on um, while recording and then editing it as needed. Um, this stream is going to be more kind of an on-the-fly um, so expect me to do a lot of trial and error, expect me to fumble a lot, um, expect me to not know the answers to some things, um, but I'm always willing to try to figure them out. So that's the main point. So don't think this is going to be very similar to my tutorials where it just kind of looks like I know exactly what I'm doing all the time because that's uh, very rarely the case. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of trial and error that goes in and um, hopefully through my process of doing that stuff you kind of learn how... Um, you can do that as well. Uh, I use the, de the debugger uh, a ton. Um, and I'm actually going to actually do a, a whole episode, I think, just on the, de the debugger. So that should be fun. So I just want to get that out of the way. Um, and we can go ahead and get started with... Uh, uh, arrays will probably come... Um, they're not super early. Let's see. Actually, not too far off. Probably in the next uh, few weeks. Probably, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I have... Kind of my list is, is doing the organization and assets. Um, one of the things people want to do is the advantages and disadvantages of each game engine. So I may even touch on that a little bit today. Get that out of the way. And then the, the debugger, um, local storage, high scores, that type of stuff. Touch controls and then arrays and functions. So that's kind of the order I have right now. <laughs> that sounds good. I actually offered to help him one-on-one um, -on -one if he wanted it, but um, he'll get there. He will get there, man. Once you learn them and functions, then uh, life just gets so much easier. Hey, Diver, what's going on, buddy? Long time no see, my friend. So um, I want to just kind of start out with... Um, with, uh, let me get back to my outline here. Kind of layout size, um, how I kind of determine this. Um, and again, this is going to kind of differ whether you're doing um, mobile or desktop. Um, if you're doing both, then that's uh, something you got to work around too. Um, always kind of keep in mind that, you know, all mobile aspect ratios, not all, but I mean, they can be quite a bit different. You know, earlier iPads had more of a 4.3. Um, 1024, 768 resolution, um, whereas the iPhones are, you know, real skinny, have a, a very, um, I don't even know if it's 16.9 or uh, even more of a ratio. Um, so keep that in mind, um, whether you want to do scaling and stretching. Um, I tend to not do that. I prefer to kind of build my layouts in such a way that um, everything is kind of centered in the middle based on kind of the lowest resolution or the, uh, you know, the most narrow, um, and then having more background kind of empty space behind it. So then the background will kind of fill in, uh, but your game will always just kind of be in the center. So it's not quite the same as having like a black border that you'll see. Um, but it's more of just showing more of the background, whatever that might be. Uh, but your game always kind of staying in the middle. Excuse me. It's a lost cause. <laughs> so, so yeah, with layouts, um, kind of what I tend to do is if I'm doing desktop, I stick to the normal 720p, 1080p resolutions. Um, if I'm doing mobile, I... Um, and it, again, it depends if you're going like high resolution retina too. Um, for me... A good starting point is usually like 960 by 640 um, or 640 by 960. Um, I kind of start there. Um, if I need to go higher resolution, then I'll kind of stick with that um, with that aspect ratio. Um, and the reason I like that one is it fits a lot of the Apple stuff. And it's kind of an in-between of, uh, you know, the 4.3 and the, the real narrow 
1280 by 800. And uh, let me see, actually, let me see what 1280 is. Is it 1280 or it's 1280 by 800, right? That like the a lot of the Google stuff uses. I guess it's pretty similar to that. So you can use that one too. Uh, but I like 640 by by 960. Um, it keeps your assets pretty pretty tight or pretty small in comparison. Um, but then you can just kind of work your uh, your background around that. So um, for example, if you have a a background, a tiled background. I don't even know if I have any tiled backgrounds, but let's look. I use one of these. So if you have a tiled background, there's no reason you can't expand it past the layout, like so. So as you can see, let me just lower this opacity. So you can see there's no reason you can't have it bigger than the layout. So then what's going to happen is as your aspect changes on that, um, you'll just see more of that background. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and that's kind of the way that I uh, do my backgrounds or do my layouts. Um, I kind of base it on that. And then generally what I'll do is I'll just, um, uh, I'll either create uh, a center icon, a center sprite, uh, or in my event sheet, I'll set the scroll to X and Y to the center. Um, and then a lot of times, at least with Cocoon, I will use Scale Outer. Um, I believe the full screen um, letterbox actually works now too. I'll have to test that out a little bit more. So, but just keep that in aware. Just kind of having a, a larger background, bigger than your layout size to kind of mesh with those different uh, aspect ratios uh, is just a good way to think about doing the, the layout size. Um, so from there, um, typically I will, um, create layouts for, um, and this is just kind of how I usually start projects. Oh, good for you, Cal. Um, so usually I'll have my, my first layout will be my title screen. Um, and I'll usually label my layouts just by a name, and then my event sheets I'll put an EVT title in front, just so I know that it's an event sheet up here in the tab. Otherwise, it's hard to tell. Excuse me, the difference. So, basically, starting out, I'll usually do a a title, a, a main. It's like my main game event sheet. Event main. I'll have a. Um, uh, and then a game over. Typically, something like this. Event game over. Either that, um, but then I, I usually have a couple more event sheets. I'll usually throw in uh, an event globals, which I'll keep all my global variables on. And then I'll add an event, an event sheet that's um, functions. Oops functions and then usually whenever I whenever uh, whatever other layout that I need my functions I'll include that layout there so for example on my main then I'll go ahead and include oops I'll include my functions layout here so that way all my functions are kind of nice and tidy on the functions event sheet um, I can get to them if I need to I can kind of group them up on there uh, and I know where they are, and they're out of the space of my main game loop over here. So that's just kind of the basic starting layout that I do. It's kind of like my template, my starting template. Um, and then when it comes to um, layers, uh, kind of the same thing. I usually start with four. Um, and I know the free version only takes four, so I usually have a background. Um, I'll have a, typically a, an enemy, a player, and then a HUD. Oops. And then I always like to stress to make sure, 
not only with just this stuff over here, but all your objects that you bring in as well to make sure you name them uh, something that makes sense. Um, and the reason I say that is these numbers. So if you go ahead and add one and you want it down here, right? Uh, these numbers have all shifted one. So if in your code you start making a game and you put something on layer one, and then you're like, oh man, I need a new layer. So you add in a layer and you're like, I know, I want it right in between these two. Well, now layer one, or I want it between these two. So now layer one is that new layer and not the layer where you had called or created that object before. Um, so by naming stuff with something that makes sense, when you go ahead and add an object or create an object with code, um, you can actually you don't have to put the number for the layer, you can put the name. So, for example, I'm going to go ahead and add, uh, let me go ahead and add a sprite in here real quick, just so i got something. Sprite 1. So, for example, if I'm going to go ahead and create, uh, oh, I need to do this on something. So say I'm going to go ahead and create an object um, like this sprite. Instead of putting in a number here, I can put in the name. So then if I do add more layers, and does, depending on where I move them, it doesn't matter because it's always going to put the, the sprite on that layer name. So you don't have to worry about going back in and rearranging all your creates and spawns and everything and, and which layer that they were spawned on. Hey, what's up, Girl Fatso? Good morning to you. Um, so that's kind of the way I do layers too. Like I said, make sure you name them. Um, it helps a ton. Uh, and that's kind of where I start with my layers is those four. Um, I might have a fifth one that's kind of like solids um, or something like that or um, collision detectors um, or triggers uh, that I can turn on and off in the editor. Uh, you know, turn on and off so I can turn those off when I'm not uh, working in them. So, yeah. You're making an MMO? Well, at least you're not new, so you could probably do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's the real uh, start and the real basics of... Um, kind of how I organize my code or organize my projects and event sheets. Um, and then I tend to just kind of have the tabs open that I that I need or that I work with. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward um, how I organize stuff. Um, secondly, I want to jump into uh, a lot of people had asked me for recommendations for assets, um, for royalty-free assets. Not necessarily free, which... My list does have some uh, free ones, but let me grab this real quick and share this with everybody. So I did come up with a list of some of my favorites. Um, and a lot of these are not, they're royalty free, but they're pay. Um, and I always tell people, if you're really serious about this, um, about game development. It, it's okay to use free assets, but when you get your game done and you're going to put it out there, um, I, I really do suggest that you pay for some uh, assets to just make it more original. Um, and some of these websites have some great stuff. Graphics River, I get tons of stuff from them. Um, they're not that expensive for um, single-use um, single uh, items. So, you know, stuff like this, it's only seven bucks for a regular license. And that's a game that you're not going to charge for. Um, but if you did need to buy an extended license, I mean, it's a hundred bucks for uh, plenty of assets, which is a steal. I mean, uh, you hire a graphics artist and it's going to cost some money. So, uh, and the same thing with, uh, with uh, sound. You know, Pond 5, I probably get a ton of my sounds from. Um, again, they're not that expensive. Uh, <laughs> oops. Um, 
they can range anywhere from you know a buck or two up to twenty bucks for a music file. Um, but it just adds that originality to uh, yeah, original sound and look to your to your game, which I think really goes a long way. Um, uh, so let's see, what were we talking about? Uh, Twitch isn't being friendly. Uh, yeah, uh, chip tone is included in that uh, text file that I linked. So uh, definitely, uh, chip tone is pretty awesome. Mm, that's uh, that's on here. There it is, chip tone. Definitely a good one. <laughs> 